So, hello everyone. Welcome to Building on Hedera. This is your, uh, I hope the, these are your first steps in Web3 development on Hedera. Um, and for those of you who are hacking on ETH Global, which starts this weekend, starting on Friday at noon, then um, this is this is perfect for you. I'll be giving a very, very short cut down version of this in ETH Global itself. So, you know, attend that as well if you like, but this is the more complete version. All right, so as, as I mentioned before, here's a QR code for the resources. Scan the QR code um, and get it onto your laptops. Um, this is the YouTube channel that I, I mentioned earlier on. This is me on Twitter. Okay, so let's begin. So um, I think many of you who have like listened to any talk on Blockchain 101 have heard of the terms Web 1, Web 2, and Web 3. So Web 1 is sort of like static, so website just is HTML, maybe some pictures, maybe some CSS, and it just provides information. So it's like a almost like a print newspaper, but it's on a computer over the internet. Um, Web 2 uh, was where they added um, interactivity. So you could interact with the web page and your web pages would go from being static to being interactive and even all the way through to application sometimes. So for example, if you used Gmail before, right, that's a full on application running in your browser, right? So that's, that's kind of where Web 2 um, uh, gets you to. Now, Web 3, um, like is the same as web two, but you, you decentralize it, right? So you remove the centralized server component and instead you have a, uh, you have a full blown, uh, ownership of your, of, of the applications that are being run and of your own data on it. So, um, there is a book, I forget the name of the author, but he calls it, um, like web one would be read, web two would be read and write, and web three would be read, write, own. Yeah. Um, so that kind of summarizes web one, two, and three. Now, um, how does the own part of it come in? Like, how do you differentiate web two to web three? Right. Um, and the answer is DLTs, right? Blockchain is a type of DLT. You also have other types of DLTs um, that use a different data structure and consensus mechanism, but essentially both of them are ledgers where you can add transactions that are immutable, meaning you cannot modify prior transactions, you cannot delete prior transactions, you can only add new ones. And the new ones that you add, they have to um, be agreed upon by the majority of the nodes that are running on that blockchain. So um, now let's come to Hedera, right? So the Within blockchains or DLTs, I should say, there have been multiple iterations. And so we think of Hedera as being third generation because it differentiates itself from priors. Now, the very first blockchain, I'm sure everyone, everyone here probably knows, is Bitcoin. So what you get with that is just pure transactions, right? You transact, you send Bitcoin cryptocurrency units from one account to another. And that's about all you can do. Now with Ethereum, that innovated by saying, hey, your transactions are not only going to be sending value of cryptocurrency to each other, but you can also write programs that execute in a virtual machine, right? And those programs are called smart contracts and those, uh, and, and the execution is done by a virtual machine known as the EVM. Now, Hedera comes along and says, okay, so I'm going to do what Bitcoin and Ethereum have done in the sense that we have a DLT, but I'm also going to add additional things to it. For example, instead of using a blockchain under the hood, I'm going to use a more efficient data structure and we call that a hash graph. And that is or was invented by the co-founder of, of Hedera, right? Um, and that's known as hash graph. So um, a common question that I get is when I say, OK, this is for Hedera. And they said, oh, do you mean hash graph? So yes, it, it, they are sort of the same thing, but the more nuanced explanation is that hash graph is the consensus algorithm and Hedera is the blockchain or DLT that is built on top of it. Now, you can see the stats in the table over here, right? We've got um, higher throughput, 10,000 transactions per second. And what's not on screen as well is a latency. So the latency is even lower as well. It's two seconds as opposed to 15 seconds for Ethereum and 10 minutes for Bitcoin. Um, and of course, transaction fee is very, very low and so on. Um, 
Now, one more thing that I'll mention is that Hedera is very, very uh, carbon efficient. So an independent study by LSE, London School of Economics, found that Hedera has the lowest per transaction carbon cost compared to any other DLT. Now, um, how does Hashgraph consensus work? Um, I won't bore you with the details, but essentially um, you can think of a blockchain as a linked list and each node in the linked list contains a set of predetermined transactions as a collection and all the transactions have to atomically be accepted or not. Now that creates a lot, lots of redundancy, Hashgraph avoids that and um, the consensus nodes process transactions rather than blocks and to do so it uses a directed acyclic graph and it has a bunch of mathematically provable properties that make it um, a superior consensus algorithm than most blockchains and that's kind of the reason why you get these kinds of crazy stats like crazy in a good way all right um, and i should also mention that it's abft and we have proven it using uh, coq the uh, mathematical proof language all right so this is what a consensus algorithm achieves and this is pretty much the first two points are common with any other blockchain i won't repeat them um, what hashgraph um, and therefore hedera has as well is these other two things gossip about gossip and virtual voting and um, i would encourage you to uh, read up on that uh, in more detail i'm not going to cover that today right um, and so here we have a, um, a qr code which i'll leave up on the screen for this youtube video and I'll leave you to uh, watch it in your own time as well. This is, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, under 10 minutes, probably under five. It's a really quick, um, it's a really quick explainer. And yeah, cool. And the, uh, and Dr. Lehman Bad, he's our co-founder and he uh, was the one who wrote the white paper where he invented this concept of a hash graph, right? So he explains it much better than I do. Whoops. Okay. So, um, and, and here is uh, what a hash graph looks like in comparison to a blockchain. So on the left, a blockchain, each of these squares is a collection of transactions. Whereas in a hash graph, each circle here is a single transaction. So imagine, um, you know, several tens or hundreds of these being packed, of, of, of transactions being packed into each block. But you'll notice that only one chain of blocks actually is the accepted uh, chain of blocks and therefore the accepted transactions. The rest of them are redundant and they are discarded. So that's where a, a large chunk of the inefficiency of blockchains come from and that forms the essentially a bottleneck, right? Hedera avoids all of that um, through gossip about gossip and virtual voting, which I mentioned earlier on. Now, how do you talk to Hedera, right? Um, with uh, anyone here who is familiar with Ethereum or other EVM compatible chains, you might be familiar with this last one in the table, JSON RPC. Now, Hedera um, is EVM compatible and it therefore also supports JSON RPC. So you can talk to it using MetaMask or any other EVM compatible wallet. You can also use EthersJS, VM, etc. to talk to it as a client side library from within your DApp. And you can also use development uh, tools and, and workflows like Hard Hat and Foundry, all of those work out of the box thanks to JSON RPC um, compatibility. Now, you also have two other means to talk to Hedera, right? One is a mirror node and one is H APIs. Um, now, these two are more Hedera specific, and if you have an EVM development background, um, this is something that you'll have to learn, you know, from scratch. And um, if you interact with Hedera's EVM, you only need to know JSON RPC and these tools. So, you know, you can do all of the EVM things that you want with it. However, if you want to go beyond that and um, use other Hedera services that are not EVM. So we've also got a token service, which we'll see in action later. We've also got a consensus service, which you can think of as event logging um, or a message queue, um, but not involving smart contracts. Then for, to use those two services, you'll need to learn these two things as well. So in the upcoming East Global Hackathon, right, um, you might want to check these out as well, right? Um, so this uses protocol buffers and gRPC, so it's pretty difficult to, to handwrite um, if you want to. And so therefore, we provide a Hedera SDK. Now, the cool thing about a Hedera SDK is that you don't have to learn a new language. For example, if you want to interact with smart contracts, you need to write smart contract in the first place. 
for that, you need to learn Solidity and a whole different set of uh, tools and workflows, right? So getting up and running with this set of things here is quite a challenge. I would say a multi-day challenge for an experienced developer, right? Now, with the Hedera SDK, it's available in languages that you probably already know. JavaScript, Java, and Go are the common ones, but there's also Rust, there's also C++. Um, what else do we have? Swift, and I think C++, you know, like you name it, there there probably is an SDK in that flavor. One, like if you know three programming languages, at least one of them, web two programming languages, that is, at least one of them will have an SDK. Chances are. Now, the next one is mirror node APIs. This one is also very easy. It's just HTTP requests. So if you've ever seen like sort of Stripe documents or uh, Swagger docs, you just look at that and you'll be able to figure it out. It's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. Um, today we'll be we'll be actually exploring all three of these, right? Um, and you'll actually see how quickly we can learn all three of these in Hedera and how easy it is to develop on Hedera. Now, <clears throat> this this is what a couple of them look like. Um, you'll be familiar with this. So JSON RPC, um, where you just set the RPC endpoint to uh, you know a Hedera RPC endpoint, and then you get a response as expected. So it's pretty um, similar to what you'd be used to when developing on Ethereum or other EVM chains. Mirror node API request, you just issue a curl request as well for a URL with some query parameters, and then you get a response. The response is also in JSON, but the format is something that is uh, maybe you're not familiar with, and you'll have to sort of look at the docs and figure it out. All right, and I will not show you the protocol buffers because that's a binary format, so you know you can't. Uh, there's, there's no equivalent of this anyway. You'll need to parse it programmatically. Okay, so I mentioned this before. Why would you want to build in Hedera? Like you can use many Web two programming languages that you may already be familiar with without learning a new one to get productive on Hedera. The other thing you can do is to use um, familiar developer tools that you may already be familiar with. Um, if you are an EVM developer, and you know, um, and you can just use them out of the box. Um, the other reason is sort of uh, like a business reason, right? So you have stable fees. So if the let's say on Ethereum, if the price of Ether goes up and down, then the fee that you pay per transaction for the exact same transaction will go up and down in tandem. Hedera not so, right? So you do pay in the Hedera's cryptocurrency called HBAR, but the amount of HBAR that you uh, pay is inversely proportional to the fluctuation in the price. So that end result of that is you're pretty much paying a stable fee for the same transaction, no matter what uh, the price you know spikes to or drops down to. It it will it will just be the same fee in dollar terms. Um, yep, and you've got a high number of transactions per second, and you've got fair transaction ordering. Now this is something very interesting for anyone who's familiar with the term MEV. Um, minimal um, extractable value. So this is something that is prevalent in uh, Ethereum and other uh, blocks where transactions essentially uh, effectively auction uh, space in the block for themselves by outbidding other transactions in terms of gas price. Right In Hedera, you cannot do that by definition because there are no blocks. So fair transaction ordering is guaranteed, and so therefore that eliminates an entire class of attack vectors that are present in other EVM chains. It's just not possible in Hedera because whatever order your transactions come in, you can't outbid another existing transaction that you see in, say, a mempool and try to get in ahead of that because there is no mempool because you don't have to build blocks. All right. Um, I mentioned this very briefly earlier on. So Hedera Smart Contract Service, that's EVM, Right, um, and you can use Solidity, JSON RPC, and all the tools that I mentioned earlier on. Now, these two other things might be uh, new to anyone who has uh, not built in Hedera before. So, Hedera Token Service is native tokens, meaning you don't have to write an ERC20 smart contract, you don't have to write an ERC721 smart contract, but you can get an equivalent fungible token or non-fungible token that behaves in the same way, and in fact, um, like has a, uh, this the same ABI as well when you interact with it um, and you know it, it just works out of box with much lower transaction fees and you can create those tokens without smart contracts you can just use a web2 programming language and create a token and in fact that's that's one of the things that we'll be doing today right today what we're doing in the workshop is to do um, one HTS token and one HSCS token 
And then finally, we'll also be doing interoperability, which combines these two together. Um, what we will not demo today, um, I can if you want later on after the workshop, uh, but there's also Hedera Consensus Service. So if you uh, ever used Kafka or AWS SQS, Simple Queue Service, um, it's pretty similar, but just a decentralized runs on the blockchain version of it rather than using a centralized cloud provider, right? Um, so I have, pl I have plenty of tutorials. I can um, send resources for those as well. All right. So um, this is what Hedera token service looks like. You get a token. This hash scan is a uh, the equivalent of the block explorer, similar to Etherscan, and um, it's natively understood by Hedera. And uh, the interesting thing about it is that you can talk to it using Hedera APIs. You can also use ERC20 and ERC721 ABIs as well. So you can interact with them using EVM dev tools uh, over JSON RPC if you want to as well. Um, consensus service, um, this is where you create a topic and you push messages onto it and you can subscribe to messages as well. So um, fairly easy. You can see this is pretty much the one on one level code to get a topic uh, up and running. And yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, smart contract service. This is EVM, right? Um, what I'll point out is that Hyperledger Besu, which is one of the implementations of EVM um, used by Hyperledger, we pretty much take the whole thing and plonk it into Hedera. And one of the good side effects of that is that, well, A, we can use an industry standard EVM implementation, and B, we're up to speed um, on the latest hard forks um, almost instantly. In fact, in ETH Global Singapore, just a couple of months ago, right, one of the participants uh, gave me feedback saying, I tried to deploy this advanced smart contract that uses the latest opcodes, um, and I was only able to deploy it on Ethereum and Hedera. All the other Ethereum L2s were behind Hedera in terms of like which hard fork and specific opcodes that they supported. So that was a pretty good, uh, pretty big win because, you know, he was only able to do his solution, submit his solution for Ethereum and on Hedera. Um, all right. So EIPs, if you're fam familiar with them, improvement proposals. So Hedera also has Hedera improvement proposals, um, kind of a cool acronym because we're hip. <laughs> um, so um, we've got a we've got a workflow that's pretty similar to an EIP process. So you know you pretty much create a GitHub issue and then progress that into a pull request where you follow a particular template. And then once there's consensus achieved, then it gets implemented. And the only main difference is that Hedera has a council, and the council will vote on uh, a subset of the HIPs that require their approval. And if it's successful, then it goes into implementation. So slightly different governance model um, towards the end, but pretty much um, analogous to EIPs. And mentioning the governing council, here is um, who they are. So Hedera is a public permissioned network, which means that anyone can interact with it. You can put your smart contracts on it. You can uh, put your transactions on it, etc. Anyone can do that as long as they're able to um, use HBAR to pa pay for the transactions. But it is permissioned in the sense that um, not anyone can run the nodes. So only entities who are part of the council are able to uh, to run nodes. Now, part of the roadmap is to transition from this to public permissionless but that's a multi-year roadmap and you know that's not where we're at right now. How does this really affect you as a developer? None, right? Because what really matters is that it's public at the moment. Cool. Um, oh, I should mention um, most of these companies here, they are basically large enterprise companies and also uh, universities. So that's the selection process that goes into the council members. The other thing that council members do apart from vote on HIPs and apart from running the nodes, is that a lot of them actually build on Hedera as well. So, yeah. 